Hello, everyone. Welcome to Listen Able. It is our podcast where we try and normalize life with disability or living with somebody affected by disability. Yeah, and to everybody that's subscribed, thank you so much. Please keep telling people about it as well because yeah. it's a really incredibly, you know, tool, a great tool that people are using to, to educate one another, able bodied or disabled, but also entertain. And I'm always learning in this podcast, Angus. And mm-hmm. guess what? I'm going to learn about something today that I know absolutely nothing about. Let's. Because I obviously am in a wheelchair. Uh, I know our guest is he, he's online, so he can't see that I am. But I'm in a wheelchair. And, you know, you, you like to think you know everything about every dis- disability, or people think you might, but I really don't. I know about my disability, but I don't like speaking on behalf of you know other people. So it's going to be a cool one today. Let's let this person introduce himself. Hi, I'm Ryan. Um, I I live in Britain. You know, lovely, Ooh. lovely good old Britain. Um, <laughs> Uh, I'm 25 years old, uh, live with my partner, and I run a turtle rescue with a few other lizards. A turtle out. rescue? Yes, I do. Brilliant. Uh, All right, we'll get your disability in a minute. Turtle rescue? Turtle? <laughs> well, hang on a What is that? What? And how'd you get into that? Um, so, uh, with obviously my disability, um, <clears throat> I, I couldn't get into work to begin with, so I, I bought this small little turtle, muscle turtle. He's only about the size of an apple now. And I took him home, and it just started from there uh to be honest so and then i read up of everything so you read in sliders and all that lot and um yeah they just needed help and no one was really there to help them so that's how i started for anyone who's seen (laughs) this on youtube or on our socials with a video clip they'll see you are wearing a turtle on your t-shirt the story checks out um (laughs) now some people might have picked up already uh, a couple of cues of what your disability could be, but for people who maybe missed them, what is your disability, Ryan? Uh, my disability, is, well, the main one is Tourette's syndrome. Uh, right, so, so little ticks. Ooh. Yeah, ticks. On cue. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, especially when you start talking about them, they, they, they seem to get more, more involved uh and in into the conversation and integrate the way into everyday life <laughs> now before we get into the whole episode we're not going to edit this right so we mm. want to just get your full self so if ticks are coming and you're feeling like you want to steam and do things go nuts man mm-hmm. like we, we right, want you to, we want you to be you so we don't want you to hold back or anything we just want to hear your story brother because we've read about you online and you seem like a good dude and we like sharing your stories here on, on Listen Able. Can you tell me and everyone else, what is Tourette's? Like, a bit uh, of background about what it is. Oh, so Tourette's as a whole, um, is like stereotypical Tourette's is what everybody thinks is the swearing tick, Ooh. Uh, which I do have. And that's uh, subsized as coprolalia. So you have different subsidiaries of Tourette's all over the place. Um, and only 5% of the people in the whole world is meant to have coprolalia, <laughs> which is the swearing tick. Um, but ticks is, uh, Tourette's is normally categorised in ticks, so you need to have at least um, one motor tick, one vocal tick, and then um, I think, actually, I think it's like two motor ticks. It, 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 it varies between person to person and diagnosis to diagnosis. It's motor meaning unique, like it's, moving your hands and stuff? Or what does that mean? Yeah, and... So like where like um sometimes I'll bring my elbow up like I'm about to dab or my my like neck. Like you dab. Yeah. <laughs> so like my elbow will come up sometimes. Yeah. Um. Ooh. You. I, um, we actually came across you from watching. Uh, I I saw um on this morning, which is the equivalent of a Today Ooh. Show or a Sunrise in the UK, where they described yeah. you as the man with one of the UK's most severe cases of Tourette's. Um, that was a good few years ago, uh, yeah. in 2017. Um, I've had many drug trials and everything since then. So ooh, they, they've calmed down a lot since then. Mm-hmm. Um, but at that time I was one of the worst and what categorizes me as one of the worst ones is I have these things called tick attacks or tick seizures. And, uh, it means that I'm on the floor in excruciating pain, screaming out for my life as it were that loud. Um, to the point we've had the police come to the door wondering what's going on. The mur- like, It just literally feels like somebody's prodding my spine with a thousand volts of electric and my whole muscles Ooh! and everything just, no, man, fuck off. Like, contra- like, yeah, it's not a nice feeling. Uh, the only good uh, side to that is I get a nice body from it because it's just 
constant workout. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I get penetrated in my brain at the moment from another type of tick, TikToks. Oh, yeah. TikTok oh. Attacks, those things can F off as well. Ooh, yeah, I'm on, I'm on TikTok. <laughs> you are? Oh, hey, well, uh, imagine, that's like, imagine doing ticks on TikTok. Yeah. Is that content ooh, uh, you've already done? Uh, yeah, I've already done it. I mean, I, I've, ooh, I'm doing a small series of my own called uh, Tourette's with Friends. Uh, so it's other people that have been on TV in the UK and I put that on TikTok to promote my YouTube channel. I've shown my turtles laying eggs. I do stupid little videos and mm -hmm. every, everything to show people that I'm I'm still the normal guy. It just ooh, me having Tourette's doesn't define who I am. So uh, back in 2017, uh, you just said that you've had a couple of trials since. So what is the what does Tourette's trials uh, medication look like? Um, oh, so it's the, the, like the medication and all that lot is, it's it, again, like I said, Tourette's is unique as a, as a fingerprint. So what works for somebody else probably won't work for me. So I've gone through ooh, many different, um, like antidepressants, antipsychotics, um, ooh, anti anxiety, um, tablets. And luckily I've, found a few like one now that is a very good anti-anxiety one it's pregabalin oh um and i'm on a sort of high enough dose that lets my anxiety levels drop so then i can be able to like control control my tics a little bit better and oh like i'm not so nervous about everything in the rat <laughs> are you born with tourette's or does it come later in life like when did you get diagnosed and kind of understand you had it so for me i was much later on um so to kind of put it is my official diagnosis was um severe complex abnormal tourette syndrome Ooh. or as i like to say it's scats because i'm scatty um, <laughs> um so i was at school one day and i had a i was i was 15 and i had a headache for about two months and i mean this headache was Ooh. biggest pressure build up in my brain you could ever think of and just wouldn't get rid of it oh and i was doing a drama performance and i asked if i could go to the medical room i got through my performance it's just getting too much um and then i went to the medical room and it just within about half hour or so it just felt like it's somebody had popped a balloon in my in my skull and all this space come rushing back and the next thing i know my neck's ticking like mad i'm rushed to hospital i'm going through cat scans and mris to make sure i've got nothing growing in my brain and oh and then that sort of, they, they put it down to teenage ticks because it went from my head to my shoulders, you know, say knees and toes, but no, um, <laughs> and to my elbow. And um, then they thought I had alien hand syndrome, Ooh, which is where my hand would punch out at anything um, or grab hold of something and wouldn't let go. And then I'd have the full body ticks, which we didn't know were full body ticks at the time. Oh, no bed. And um, they put them down as pseudo seizures, which is a nice way of saying you're putting, you're putting it on, but we'll deal with it. Um, and then I went to uni, I carried on studying. Oh, and then when I was 21, I woke up one day and my poor partner had to come get me from work because I felt like I was having one of these pseudo seizures. Um, oh, and yeah, the next thing I know is I've asked my manager for a glass of drink, and the next thing to come out of my mouth is, No, you can die of thirst, like in response to my own self. And then oh. it snowballed on from there and I've gone to my neurologist and ooh, I hadn't seen him in a few years. And he's like, well, I've been waiting for you to turn up at my door. I'm like, okay, like, what do you mean by this? And he had had Tourette syndrome down the whole time. He just didn't want to plant it in my head. He wanted it to come out naturally and mm. when it did. Wow. So pre-15, you had no symptoms? Nothing. nothing. It was, wow. No, they believe it could have been a sore throat that caused uh, my one. Wow, so a sore throat. <laughs> affects yep. the neurology in your brain and things that's really yeah i had um oh they be, they tested too late to know that it, if it was right but they believe i had strep throat mm. and then my antibodies done something to neurons or chemical paths in my brain and yeah that, that was the last time i had a real bad infection so with this covid and that going on i've not stepped foot outside <laughs> yeah. oh, of course Ooh. because infections can you know obviously hit you in a different way yeah yeah so it's, it's a bit scary <laughs> let's go to 15 years old when you get you know what was undiagnosed then as as <laughs> tourettes um was there a, was there a how did you react to it for one like Ooh. how did i mean being at that age you're so vulnerable and susceptible to any sort of 
uh, negativity towards Ooh. your body as you grow and develop. How did you take it? Uh, I'm, I mean, my dad always said that when he used to come in and check on me at night when I was when it first started, is he'd always see me holding my head even in my sleep when my te- neck ticks and that were happening. Um, it wasn't nice. Uh, being the age of 15 and having every inch of you poked and prodded and go on this tablet, that tablet, oh, this tablet you've got an allergic reaction to that makes your tongue stick out like a dog. Yeah. And all it is, it's not nice. And then not to have a definite, I don't want to say label. Oh, no, man, fuck off, because I hate that label. Um, I, well, I hate the word label, should I say, mm. sorry. There still wasn't enough balance there because I didn't know what it was. I didn't know if I was just going crazy. But then, like, sort of, yeah, since I was about 15, obviously going through my exams and everything in the UK and then having to miss three months of those because of it going on and then missing my first year of college, having to take a gap year when I just wanted to go straight into ex- like education. Um, it took its toll quite a bit, I'd say. But then I guess I kind of learned to live with it. And my friends, like my close friends and my family, oh, like obviously I didn't have the vocal tics then. It was just literally like Ryan's having a fit um, sort of moment. So it wasn't every day. But then I guess kind of getting the diagnosis at the age of 21, <laughs> oh, um, not a bed, kind of alleviated pressure on my shoulders and then but just added tons more <laughs> new pressures bull- onto my shoulders. Yeah. Did you get bullied when you started um, at school by you know, people? Understand. Uh, uh, I have to say, luckily I was not bullied for my tics. I was bullied for my sexuality um, mm. until one boy, <laughs> uh, he, he turned around to me and kept calling me gay and then he'd call, like, call me a spastic at times as well. And then it kind of stopped after I confronted him in the corridor and I said, you're obviously thinking about me a lot and I'm obviously on your brain, so I just want to say thank you. <laughs> and after that, so. <laughs> nice. um, has it ever been beneficial for you? I imagine uh, a couple. Of, let's say you had a teacher you hated, and you're in high school, and he goes, "Ryan, you got a C minus. You'll never amount to anything." You go, "Wanker, piss off, dickhead!" And you're not actually ticking. Um, no, because I didn't have the. the oh, you uh, had the vocal oh, tics. Handy. I had the vocal tics at that point. But, but have, has it like you're an ex manager or somewhere you've worked in the past ooh. ten years or you know past four years since you've been diagnosed since twenty one? Have you ever used it as a? Oh, I'm sorry, that was the Tourette's. It. No, okay. never like that. Because okay. I, if I, I kind of see that as, oh, very uh, very stereotypical. So yes, um, good. And I was going to say, do you feel like that would be taking the piss ooh. out of a genuine disability? Yeah, it would. I'd be taking it. Like, I do laugh at myself. Like, there's things ooh, that I'd say. So, in the past, I've said crickets on your clip to my mum. I've <laughs> done, said and done everything. I've, I've called out my partner for apparently wearing a pink tutu before he goes to bed in town. <laughs> um, so, like, it, it's, it's there all that. There is some humour in it, but you can laugh at yourself. There is it. some humour, but, like, I yeah. don't... Yeah, I'm not stereotypical to it because you, there's more to it. Yeah. <laughs> do, you get, do you get to pick your ticks? Like, how do they develop? Like, do you, um, can I, like, for example, you said the word knobhead a few times, which I, got is, a couple. is my favourite insult ever, but I love knobhead. So I said knobhead a lot. So I imagine, Ooh. right, if I ticked, I would say knobhead because that's on my brain quite a bit. Is that kind of how it works? Um, mine can be very observational sometimes. Um, Wait, what are you then, trying to say? You said, are you trying to say we're both knobheads? We're knobheads? <laughs> no, 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 no. Hey! <laughs> Hang on. Nomad's my favorite. Uh, well, I, I say my favorite one. It's one of my go to ticks, as they call okay. it. Um, ooh, whereas, like, but it changes over time. So, like, it can be spiders bounce, pigs fly, dogs go fetch. And, but uh, mm. they can be very observational. So, the worst thing is when I was doing a program for the BBC called Employable Me Too, which was series two. Oh, there was a. Um, a, a, a man there who's a very nice person I've got nothing wrong, uh, um, like against him Ooh! Mm. but he had no legs and in my head all, all I could think about because you have intrusive thoughts with mm. Tourette's so it's like mental tics it's Legolas from Lord of the Rings mm, and uh, yeah. I was just itching to say it all day and to the point I had to take myself out of the room let them all come out and then just go and sit back down Interesting. It's, <laughs> so you can like kind of control it. 
but that kind of takes up all your effort. Yeah, it's very yeah, time consuming to sit yeah, there. Very and... difficult to do. <laughs> yeah, very. Ooh. So off what Dylan was saying about um uh you know, do you get to pick your ticks? Can you implant them? Is there some sort of hypnotherapy that you could do, or is there anything out there or some Charlemagne Charlotte who's saying Ooh. out there, you know, I can I can make your ticks be the choice words that you want, or is there no control? Um, I mean, there's one that my friends and my partner like to take advantage of sometimes. Oh, um, when I'm very ticky, uh, the takeaway uh, shop KFC, uh, fast food restaurant, can cause me to say fuck off. And my partner will do that just to get a laugh. And then I'll laugh <laughs> a few times and then I'll be like, right, it's starting to get painful now. Like, can you stop? Hmm. And then, um, but when... I've also had, as you said, like charlatans and that come up to me saying that I need an exorcism and <laughs> I need cleansing. I need to take magic mushrooms to reset my brain. And yeah, I've had all that. <laughs> yeah. How do, how do people react, man? Like, mm. you know, I'm in a wheelchair. People react weirdly to me, Ooh. but I've got a visible disability and, you know, there's just some idiots out there that give you a hard time. But I mean, you're just walking down the street, right? And you say something that they would seem offensive. Obviously, you can't control it. What what do they do if they don't know who you are? Um, I've well, uh, I've had uh, plenty of people film me in shops and follow me around shops with video cameras. Um, and um, one super chain I'm not going to ne- mention because we've sorted it out now. Uh, they got me in for meetings with their staff and all that lot. Oh, but um, two of their staff followed me around with their phone, copying my noises while they were in work uniform. Not good enough. Um, I've had people accuse me of being on drugs. I have was looking after my godson um, during the whole of last summer while his mum was away visiting someone in America. And oh, I had one of my ticket hats. And even though there was a 19-year-old in the house, which was his older brother, um, this ambulance lady decided upon herself that I was unfit to look after a child, even though mm. my godson probably knows better than half of any anyone in the world of what's going on um so uh, you just get you get comments thrown at you all the time well, and nine times out of ten it's yeah, yeah it, oh i get upset but then if i don't say anything if or if i react negatively i feel that i put a negative light on myself whereas if i just say look can you not do it or i've got Tourette's, then that's the best i can do i can't like mm. I and try it comes and educate down to their people. character. Yeah, of course. Yeah. I was just want to say hi to your boyfriend who's waving in the background. Yeah. So it's uh, Charles, is it? <laughs> he's doing something. Yeah, it's Charles. Is they can see your arm, Charles. No, I think he's stretching. Charlie. In the mirror. He's right. doing see some arm. moves. Yeah. I like it. So <laughs> hey, g'day, Charles. We can see you there in the reflection. Man. Let's talk about <laughs> your relationship. Um, so you were dating Charles before yep. you were diagnosed with ticks? Oh, sorry, yeah, with Tourette's? As- yeah, so ooh, um, I met Charles on the online dating site. I would have got way more <laughs> if I'd done time for murder. Um, but we've been together six years this year, and he's been there since sort of like day one of when the ticks, like the vocal ticks, the vocal ticks. started. Yeah. So it's been a bit of a toll on him. Um, people have come up to him saying, why is he bothering with me and why is he wasting his time and effort and putting it all into me when he could be doing his stuff and he puts up with me. I put up with him as much as he wants me. (laughs) How did you come to terms with that man? Was there pressure? Did you feel not good enough when you had to tell Charles that you had it? Um, I mean, I think we kind of knew when the, because obviously with the pseudo seizures or full body tics, uh, when the vocal tics and that started coming out, we kind of knew. Um, So, like I said, yeah, he's been supportive. He's just had that little devil on his shoulder every now and then with people that we thought were friends that just kind of, for some reason, are toxic. And yeah, it was, mm. they put thoughts and things in his head that weren't nice. And Letting sorry, he was like, he, he woke up one morning and all he could remember is me saying, fuck off. But it was actually him having to come to my work and sort of <laughs> like, but um, he's still asleep with, shop, with a massive. <laughs> you say it's still a shock to, put me, to wake up one day and to find out that I'm ticking and yeah. life yeah. sort of since then is because <laughs> he's had to become my full time carer because of other like things that I've got that have snowballed afterwards and 
yeah, it's just it's kind of been of a hard ride, but we're trying to get. <laughs> You're doing well. You don't have to answer anything. We if you anything makes you uncomfortable, please tell me to get effed. But I got to ask, do you tick when you guys are getting sexual with each other? Is it like does it still happen? Um, I'll have to ask him. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Do I tick when anything sexual happens or when we're you know? Oh, getting jiggy with it. That one. Instantly, <laughs> yes, um, and it makes me very anxious. Yeah, I could hear that he said it makes him very anxious, and yes. So in an intimate situation, mine's gone to bite apart, and right. it scared me. <laughs> so he only gets anxious because of I've I've gone to bite a part of the male anatomy. But... Oh. Oh, of course. Hey, that yeah, makes yeah. sense because you can't control. That also makes me anxious Ooh, thinking no. about that. Yeah, of course. <laughs> yeah, does me right. too. I think every man has kind of had the reaction of when a cricket ball hits you in the yeah. balls. It's, Ooh. <laughs> made me gay, and that was teeth. I don't want that to be. Oh yeah, he said the film Teeth made him gay, and he doesn't want teeth <laughs> to make him <laughs> heterosexual again. Gotcha. <laughs> Very good. Ooh. Um. What, when it comes to, so then my, here's my limited knowledge up until, you know, learning more about you and, and Tourette's. And once again, you know, you're not the standard for Tourette's. It's different Ooh. for every person. We understand that as we go. But I knew that if you try to suppress a thought, that's going to come to the foreground of your Tourette's. Um, is that true? So if, you, if you're thinking, Ooh. don't say it like your Legolas um, comment before, there's one, yeah. have you found that, trying to suppress them makes things worse and does that actually affect you physically emotionally mentally um yeah it does i mean uh, it sort of affects you where it feels like fire ants or something like i said someone is electrocuting you because mm. you're trying to hold it in so much to the point it starts to become painful and then that's when like sort of the coping mechanisms come into it oh so the best one that i use for things like funerals weddings or anything like that is pinching this bit of skin um between, between my thumb, thumb and, and my finger. finger. Funerals. And, uh, or, wow. Or I've I, never thought about that. Have you ever said Ooh. something at a funeral? Um, luckily, no. Because the only okay. funeral that I've had is my cousin's. Um, and sadly, he passed away of cancer a few years ago. Um, but his mum, my auntie, literally put her arms around my shoulder straight afterward and said he would have been proud of you for that. Because oh, I was quiet. But because okay. obviously where it was more family orientated, I was a bit more relaxed. And you pinch the skin as a way to the skin. take yeah. the thought down to there. Do you have one yeah. story where it was just an incredibly awkward situation where something happened? Um, yes. And it's the one that I always tell. Uh, and that's because there's, uh, I want to get across, I'm not racist. Just because yep. what comes out of my mouth sometimes could be. I'm Ryan, not, this, I'm, is this is so <laughs> interesting. This is so Ooh. interesting. That's all right. Um, but, it was the summer and this is where it comes back to the observational ticks. It was the summer a few years ago and um, anybody can wear that they want. I'm <laughs> don't mind me. I sit in sweatpants and slippers all day long. Like <laughs> I'm no one to judge. Oh, but um, a lovely young lady was wearing a hijab and she was pushing a trolley. Uh, not, not she's pushing a buggy with her baby and sorry. And, Charlie had to pull me away quick because I've literally just reached out to grab her, her hijab or her headscarf, oh. and pull it down and tell her it's too warm to, to wear scarves. Now, of so course, that, like was... you said, that's nothing to do with race or being racist, but that was your tics. Yeah, yeah, that was my tics. So, or unfortunately, when all the suicide bombings and that were going off in France a few years ago, I couldn't go in town because I ended up making myself look like a twat. Um, oh, because I was shouting things like Allah Akbar and all that lot because it's what is it? What oh, I kind of forefront. yeah, it's the forefront because it's on every it, what is on everybody's mind, mm -hmm. and obviously it's just come fresh out in the news that day. And even though I may not be physically thinking it or wanting to think about it, it's just going to come out. What can make me feel uncomfortable? Or what can make everyone else feel uncomfortable? Oh, I know. I'm just going to shout that. So and <laughs> oh non-envious position because if you did do that people just don't take the time to understand do they ryan like people um, will just immediately judge you for that yeah I've, I've been judged almost like on the turn of a pin as it were so like like within seconds i could be having a conversation with someone and then 
because I've ticked something, they don't want to know me the next, or I'm walking down the street and I've, I think I remember ticking something saying, oh, the only hair I have on my body is my pubes. And one woman looked at me and went, oh, you fucking perv, like that. And I turned around and went, I've got Tourette's. And she went, well, you're not saying anything now. I was like, it doesn't work like that. I'm not a yeah. performing monkey. I'm, I don't, yes. like, you don't put pleasure. a coin in my hat. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I don't, don't put a coin in my hat and I dance around or smash tambourines. Yes, Oh, yeah. Charlie just said even his ex-manager expected that. I was sat waiting for Charlie in the waiting room, and they were watching me on CCTV to see if I ticked. Oh, just waiting. Um, and I, but obviously, where I was in public and I was in a waiting room, I, for a restaurant, I physically suppress my ticks. I don't want to be sat there making noises while somebody's enjoying their pizza. So, do you have coronavirus just on the tip of your tongue at the moment when you're out and about? Um, I cough. Coughing oh, wow. is one that comes out a lot. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and that's hard, man, because we work in radio as well. And uh, like when one of us has to cough on air, we're like running out of the studio. Yeah. Because it's not even <laughs> so worried that people are going to think we're cook. For you, it would be tough. Yeah. Um, I normally just turn around and say, sorry, I've got allergies or. Very true. Not, that's true. Um, the <laughs> I have to ask about transport. Um, planes in particular, because Ooh. we're talking about suppressing that thought. The one thing that I imagine if I had Tourette's, I would be walking through is please Tourette's don't mention bomb in an airport, but because I'm thinking that, and we've Ooh. found out these are the suppressions that make it more difficult and makes it like, like it has to come out. Otherwise it's going to hurt you. I'm fat. Um, ha let's ooh, talk about so, have you had those examples or what, what goes on in there? I luckily haven't been on an airplane since like I've ticked, so I haven't had to put oh, up with that kind of pressure. Um, yeah. I haven't had time to go on holiday with these animals running around me and <laughs> all that right. lot. Um, ooh, but I don't take trains, um, or buses or like the, the very minimal public transport I take is a taxi, but that's because it's one on one and I can explain to the taxi. Or the Uber driver, look, I've got Tourette's and don't mind. And nine times out of ten, they just want to sit me in the front and learn about it, which is mm. nice. But I'm then not, I've not got the beady eyes of the general public watching me. And mm. yes. Yeah, right. <laughs> so I try and get cards everywhere, save up, pay people for petrol money. <laughs> tra tra travel's a beautiful thing. Are you going to look to do it or has Tourette's written it off? No, no. See, I'd I'd love to do it, and and going back to my turtle passion is I'd like to go to Ontario in Canada because uh, there's a woman out there ooh, that um, deals with the wild like population of turtles and that all over there, and she puts them back together when they've been hit by cars. And I'd I'd, I'd like to go visit her one day so, when so I what, get. What do you do then? So if you go, I, like I'm trying to figure it out. If you go on a plane, do you just kind of tell everybody around you. Like, what's the process? Ooh. I guess. Um, I mean, well, some, there's been care. stories, no, there's, I, I think I would tell people, but there's been some stories where, um, the captain has politely asked, oh, the individual that's got Tourette's or the family, if it's okay, if he puts it over the tannoy mm. saying, we've got somebody on here with Tourette's that's quite vocal. Mm. But, Especially and, and to and the chance lot. of yelling out something to do with a bomb on a plane. He, he, yeah, I wouldn't want the like the the, the air marshal to come running mm. at me and not knocking me over while I'm on my way to the toilet. Uh, no, I know, I know, I seem hung up on that, but I do have to say I watched a lad Bible video within the last week, and it was a guy with Tourette's talking about the exact situation that I'm saying, where he tells the flight staff and they're fantastic in letting passengers know, and he also said, and I wondered if you'd ever thought about this, Ryan. He um has a business card as well. Mm. Um, very similar to, as he described it to the Joker's business card where he passes it to the passenger with, you know, the um, Joaquin Phoenix version. Mm. And it says, you know, please excuse my laughter. I have a condition. He has business cards that when he can't be bothered chatting to somebody or explaining himself oh. in passing by conversation, he would just hand them a business card and go on with his day. Have you ever thought about um, using these sorts of things? I did have it until I lost my wallet. <laughs> um, <laughs> but I, I had a... Tourette's passport, as they classed it. So if somebody wanted, or you just couldn't be bothered to explain, or somebody ooh, came up and started arguing with you, you just show them the Tourette's action, like passport, which is a okay. um, charity in the UK. And right. then you take it back off them and you tell them, right, go away. 
yeah. one thing I don't want to see your face anymore. <laughs> yeah. One thing, one thing Angus and I really like about you is you are proud of your Tourette's and you, you, you seem pretty proud to be the person that you are. What's like your yes. advice to anyone listening, anyone that is starting to tick and starting to understand they have Tourette's and probably doesn't like the person they're seeing in the mirror because of it. Um, I am proud of who I am. I, 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 there's, um, I couldn't be, like, I know it sounds big headed. I couldn't be more proud of what I've achieved or what me and my partner achieved through everything in my family. Um, but what I will say is that it's okay to go through that process of not liking yourself, but because everybody does it, it's, it's the most natural thing to, to do. Um, but Tourette's doesn't just affect you as an individual. It does affect your family and your friends. So you aren't the only one really in your close circle going through it. You, like, even though it's hard for you and twice as hard for you, it's, it's also hard for your parents to see you go through that because they don't quite understand what's going on in your head. They, they want to be able to fix you. So what I will say is just talk about it. Don't sit there and not want to because the more you suppress it, the more you, you start getting into a negative circle of oh, I'm not going out and you start, you don't want to go out. It, it just snowballs. So like I said, it's okay to have days where you don't want to see yourself, where you, you think you're a bit of a oh, freak in the brain. I mean, I do. Everybody does. It's, mm. it's, it's natural. If you didn't, I, I would say that you, I don't know. But like, it's, let's just say the stigma is starting to wear off and, and people are more interested in wanting to know. So, that that's that also makes it a hell of a lot easier mm. when when people start to become more accepting and, and instead of oh it's a boy that that's born on TV or so yeah. like uh, Ryan when are you not ticking or do you always tick is it does it come down to a comfortability around like I can imagine you know we've woken you up quite early uh, you're at six o'clock six thirty your time there you know it's but this is being filmed it'll go on our socials our YouTube it's a podcast we were talking about Tourette's so I can imagine this is going to be an environment where you take no. chatting to two unknown people um yeah but is there times when you tick don't tick or tick less do you tick in your sleep um Charlie would say that I tick in my sleep sometimes obviously I, I, I'm not too sure if I do of course. Uh, cause, uh, it's I'm like snoring who cares you're asleep <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> um <ooh. laughs> There we go. Um, oh, so like, I'm worse when I'm obviously talking about it, and when I'm meeting someone new, or the environment's completely different because I, I don't do well with change. Um, oh, but then I'm not as ticky when I'm in my own environment. So when I'm with my animals, when I'm with my family, just at theirs, or it's when I normally go out. Supermarkets are the worst place because everybody's walking around, everybody's looking and touching and <laughs> it's, it's it's cool it's noticeable like when you're talking about your partner you don't tick as much because yeah. you're not talking thinking about your ticks thinking about your partner and then as soon as yeah. you ask a question about ticking mm. you tick and it, it must be it and it's hard more. for you because yeah. guess what everyone wants to talk about my fucking stop everyone wants to talk about my wheelchair everyone Ooh. wants to talk about your Tourette's you know what I mean so it's yep. a topic on everyone's tongue which would make it I guess hard especially in social situations for you um i mean yeah it, it is hard because like you just said it, it's it, it as soon as you've got something that's completely off norm oh it, it is it is what everyone wants to know they want to talk about it and i'm fine with talking about it, it just like i said I, I tick a lot more and it, it sort of tires me out if i like for too long so like mm -hmm. when i was doing the tv program or what like other things and that i would be gone i'd be out for days and the net like a few days afterwards because it just it was way too much having a camera shoved in my face 24 7. In, employable me is a show that helps months. people with a disability get jobs but if you haven't seen it there's an australian version did you get a job out of oh, it it's, it's in australia um right? i did i did get a job yeah um oh uh, so i've got um i, I worked in uh, an aquatic store obviously i love the aquatics Works, cool, um, yeah. uh so but ooh, that start there was a period not long after that where i was in hospital for three weeks where i was if i wasn't awake if i wasn't sleeping sorry oh i'd be tick fitting so I, they'd have they had me on gas and air for about a week until my neurologist came in and went you're killing him is that you know that right gas so and air. i'm not sure what that is yeah um entonox 
the stuff they give women when they're like giving birth or you've oh, broken right. your arm and like okay. so yeah, yeah. The, like the on bondi rescue it's the green whistle oh yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 it's kind of like immediate pain <laughs> relief <laughs> there's Imme- my yeah, reference. international um, reference thank ooh. you Chris. So that's right. Uh, so like they've um, ooh, was, yeah. So they put left me on that for a whole week because they didn't know what else to put me on, or it was like higher dosages of diazepam or lorazepam, zopiclone to knock me out, and yeah, for three weeks. But and then we kind of parted ways on good terms because I, in my head, ooh, if I wasn't reliable enough to go in on the days that I was going in, I was I was scheduled to go in. Mm-hmm. And just, I'd ring up, oh, sorry, I can't come in. My ticks are playing up. Then I felt I wasn't the best employee, like the best colleague or employee or, oh, as much as they Because he's got to run a business as well. Yeah, that's, that's, that, that was my head. As much, like I said, as much as they protested, they didn't care. Oh, in my head, it was just, what if it's just me and the manager in for the morning? Like, mm. he won't then be able to go to a toilet break or anything because he can't leave yeah. millions, of of, well, thousands of pounds worth of, tropical marine fish laying around with do you know what i'm saying so it's oh it it was me taking the sensible route i think um what about when you're in the, what about the future uh, do you think or do you know of any technology that is being developed to help ticks or people with tourettes um the the major one i can think of uh like technology wise is especially over in america is um they're starting to put rods in people's brains, so like Ooh. electric rods, oh. and then like battery packs and all this down to your chest and all that. Right, lot. Are you, so it's, are you keen on that? Oh no, no. <laughs> I'm not having that done. Why? That sounds very invasive. That sounds Ooh. like get effed. Sounds yeah. like a bit Tony Stark, um, to be honest. Though. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, my partner would not mind if I ended up Tony Stark because he's <laughs> all over Robert Downey Jr. and <laughs> Iron Man and everything. But um, oh. The thing is, is even if they're a millimeter off, it can trigger something else in the brain. But then it's not even, uh, I think it's 60% or like, or no, sorry, less than 50% chance that it'll actually do anything or make mm. a difference. Oh, because all they're trying to do is just balance out the electrodes and neurons and that that are going on in the brain. Um, and then I guess the other thing is cannabis, marijuana, and all that. Like, I don't smoke it myself. I can't stand stuff mm. oh i don't like the smell but has there been some research that shows that CTB it can? oil ctb ctb uh cb yeah cbd CBT. oil helps cbd uh <laughs> oh um that helps um like so you put it under your tongue a little bit or um something like it, it helps calm it i wouldn't say it completely stops yeah. it but yeah if I'm there was a cure would you take it yeah if you could Ooh. be out of, if you could lose your tourettes and never have had it would, is that not, not never have had it, I think. But okay. like, what about going if, if there was a cure? Um, no, not for me now. It's ooh, for the younger generation, maybe. If that if there's a pill that could stop it, or they they knew what, exactly what it is, because still to this day in medical journals and that everyone's got theories on what Tourette's is. Nobody knows exactly what it is. Oh, but um, I wouldn't take it now. Um because I enjoy doing things like this. I enjoy raising awareness, um, mm. being an advocate for it. But yeah, I think for the younger generation, especially when it starts at like the age of five for some kids and you can tell that they're proper, they don't, at that age, they don't know what's going on at all. They, they just mm. know what time's dinner and what time to wake up and go to bed. Mm. And then you see kids at that age ticking and they're hitting themselves or like they're getting this rage from somewhere. It's, it's, it's hard and I would like to, take it away from them like be a kid mm. there's already too much pressure in this world to not be kids so yep. <laughs> hey, I, I had to google ryan to be perfectly honest is tourette's a disability i genuinely googled it because when we're, we're trying to have a scope of disability Ooh. that is all encompassing and it did come up yeah. as yes it is a disability yes. do you see it as a disability um legally yes morally no because I'm no different to anyone else. Mm-hmm. Um, I've I've applied for jobs and that since Maidenhead Aquatics and all that lot, or oh, going out in public and people, like I said, people see it as a disability, and I don't, I don't see anything wrong with me. I just, I just want to be a normal, tax-paying human. Um, but because obviously I can't go out and 
get a job. That's why I bought my rescue into my home. So I wake up every morning with a purpose still, and I still feel like I'm giving back to the world. Man. <laughs> Got a bowl of uncomfortable. I'm not sure if you've heard our podcast before, but it's a question that we ask or someone we ask on behalf of our social media people, or someone might've emailed knowing that you were going to be a guest yeah. on our podcast. We've got one each. Go first. Go for Ooh. it, Dil. When you tick in an inappropriate time, do you feel mm-hmm. like an embarrassment and do you feel like you let people down? Um, specify an inappropriate time. I don't know. That's up to you. Like, have you ever felt like, you know, you've said yeah. things and you've just went, Ooh. man, I hate myself for doing that because of how it affects other people. Or the response you get. Um, so obviously with the lady with the hijab bit, that really took me back. Um, I wouldn't, I, I was like housebound, flat bound for a week. I didn't want to go outside. Mm. Um, I didn't want, I don't like insulting people. It's the only person I can insult is my partner. And that's because we've been together six years. If it's not, if I'm not allowed to do that, then, well, then when are we ever ready for a relationship? Um, oh, so like that's, that was the worst bit that inappropriately, like, yeah, has caused me a bit of setback because I'm like I said I take people for as they are as long as they respect me then I'll respect them and Good answer. if I can't re- so yeah if I can't respect myself or if I haven't respected them in the fact that I've ticked oh like um then I yeah I feel really bad if you're not proud of your ticks who's going to be proud of if you're not proud of them yourself who's going to be proud of you so exactly that. so um and this was a two-part question <clears throat> from Dale online uh the first one is uh what tick are you most scared of making um my barking tick hmm. why is that my because it um especially when say i'm having my tick attack i know that sounds really boring saying my barking tick um because uh, when my partner's on the phone to the ambulance because they they come out they sort it out like there's a little bit of entonox and all that lot but um is that they have to ask on the phone is there a dog there i'm barking my head off and my partner's going, no, he's got Tourette's. And they're like, well, sounds very realistic. It sounds like, and I have ticked to the point where I've barked and then cried like a dog and then made a thud as if I, then I'll shout, shut the fuck up as if I'm hurting the dog. Oh, and your neighbors would be like, this guy's smuggling a puppy into this apartment and then abusing it. Exactly. And then wow. like, it, it's, and then the other, I guess the other scary tick is, is that I can't handle sharp objects because I have that urge to, Ooh. I've had forks in my head and everything. And Ooh, yeah. Well, yeah. yeah it's if you can't nice. control certain <laughs> movements. No, good excuse Ooh. to get out of cooking. Dylan has one as well. Yes. Can't wait to <laughs> and the other one was um, from Dale Ooh. wants to know, uh, what is the word that you hate the most that you tick? Now I know it sounds like that's the same question, but word, uh, he, you know, right. is there a swear word or something that you just, you know, you've said the F word and knobhead on this one. I mean, there might be, you know pretty is there um, one that you're just you've said before in the past a particular word and you're like oh god i hope this doesn't become part of my vocab prob- probably not a swear word due to my mouse uh, running sewer day in day out yeah. <laughs> regardless right. of the tracks of um it probably is any racial slur i, I there's no there's, there's no one like sort of like i'm pointing and i'm pushing and i don't know what but there's no one certain thing i can go that's mm-hmm. what i don't want to say Mm. It's it, the, there's many so racial slurs, even homophobic ones, and so yeah, <laughs> and, and, yeah, and you're like, I'm gay, I didn't mean it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> and imagine weight shaming. Mm. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. I'm very big on people that have that attack people for the way their body is, and oh, like and that must must be so tough to be someone who is so into equality. Um, but your uncontrollable ticks make you sound the absolute opposite. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That 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 is the worst one. It's, hey, uh, when I'm picking out people's flaws, is, yeah, is exactly. probably the best yeah. answer for that. Hey, Ryan, thanks so much for coming on. What's That's your right. final, you know, lasting word you want to leave on people when they, you know, when they when we're talking about Tourette's and, and maybe life. they have it, like you said, yeah. or maybe they're they're going to come into contact or encounter someone Ooh. with um, Tourette's and ticks. Read between the lines or read between the ticks, as it were. Hmm. So as I tell people when they're talking to me, um, ooh, especially in interviews and other like social things, if I tick, try and blank it out 
concentrate on what I'm trying, what we're trying to say, people Tourette's are trying to say, instead of concentrating on something that we already find embarrassing half the time. And it, it, it helps. If you sit there and ignore it, my partner now just breezes over it like it's a, a, like a piece of ice on a cold road. Like he's, he's managed to get the selective hearing in, mm. <laughs> in check. Um, and also don't let a label define you because it doesn't matter if you're in a wheelchair. Oh, um, you've got ticks. Uh, I don't know, even some is like alopecia or do you know what I mean? Like don't, mm. labels don't define you. Maybe add to that label as courage. Right. Good. You can call me a knobhead any day. I love it. <laughs> me too. Oh, I thank me you. Me too. And you already have a couple of times. Oh. Uh, at Ryan Colin nineteen ninety five for on Twitter. Um, if you want to chat to you, uh, contact you on the social media. Thank you so much for being part of this podcast in an area That's that great. I think will surprise a lot of people that Ooh. we that we went into. So thanks for um stepping outside. Brilliant. Of thank you. Thanks, mate. And getting up early yeah, in right. London. Get your boyfriend. Can his boyfriend come on screen? Yeah, just, see what he looks like. Um, Is he ready? Charles, I want to see what you look on? like quickly. <laughs> are the Aussie accent strong? Very strong. Yeah, but mine's, I've got that deeper, hus- huskier version. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but it probably sounds more, more. Uh, what do you call them in, not chavvy, what do you call it in English? Well, like bogan. What's that in? Um, oh. Chavvy. No. <laughs> chavvy, okay. There you go. That'll do. Uh, chavvy's the, the typical, yeah, in it, mate. That one. Yeah, it'd be like that. Yeah. yeah, what you're saying. yeah. <laughs> Gentlemen, appreciate oh. it. Thank you, guys. All right, then. No Thank right. you. Appreciate it. Bye. Um, Bye. See you guys. We'll talk to you on the Twitter about when it's going to be released, everything. 